This is a video on how to create number two out of activity 4.2 model creation. Now in Inventor I've already finished uh, creating activity 4.2 number one. You'll notice I came up and clicked on save and I just named this activity 4.2 number one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and create the second part. So you'll note that in the second part it says all dimensions are in millimeters. So let's go ahead and click on our view of this object and let's zoom in. And there's more than one way to create almost every part you're going to do. Um, we're going to use the subtractive method to make this. I could just do one sketch that is just this shape you see here, extrude it back and do one cut after that. But we're going to draw a rectangular prism and then we're going to do two cuts. So let's go back to Inventor and let's go to File and let's go to New. And you're going to notice that we're going to be in metric and we're going to come over to millimeter.ipt and let's click on that and let's say create and you're going to get your space loaded here. And we're going to go back to our sketch and we want to create a rectangle that is 60 by 40. 60 wide by 40 tall. Create 2D sketch, XY plane. We're going to grab two point rectangle. Click on your origin, I'm going to drag up this way and I want 60 tab 40 and hit enter. I'm going to click on the word front, excuse me, the word front and you're going to see it flip to our front view. Right click and say OK. Let's go to finish sketch. Click on your house Notice how it's going to flip it around for me like this. I want to flip this way. And sometimes if, you're, if your view cube gets weird, I'm going to go to the top right hand corner and right click on this and go down to set current view as home and go to fit to view. Now if I click the home button, it's going to make this rectangle fit my screen. That's what fit to view means. Fit it to whatever view we're currently in. Let's go to extrude and we're going to flip directions and we're going to go to the depth we have, which is going to be 30. So we're going to highlight this, go back and go to 30 and we're going to say OK. And you'll notice now we have the rectangular prism that you see here without the cut in it. So so we're going to go ahead and put in a rectangle and cut this rectangle back. But I want to show you a little bit of a different way to go about putting in these rectangles that will make things actually easier for you. So let's go to Inventor and I'm going to go to my pencil and we're going to click on our front view of our object. And I'm going to click on the word front. And I want you to grab a hold of two point rectangle. And I want you just to come up here somewhere and just click and draw a rectangle inside the object. And right click and say OK. And you're going to notice that I can drag around these black lines because they have no constraints. There's two constraints to sketch geometry, numeric and geometric. This does not have any distance to it and it also has no geometric relationship. The only geometric relationship these lines really have is that they're perpendicular to one another. They're 90 degrees. This line's parallel to this, this line's parallel to this, this line is perpendicular to this line. Those exist but they only exist in relationship to itself and not to the existing geometry. What we're going to do is we're going to place dimensions that um, will place numeric constraints in its relationship to existing geometry. So dimension from the vertical line here to the vertical line here you're going to drag up and you're going to put in 10 and hit enter. And on the right hand side, over here it's 25. Dimension, vertical line, vertical line, excuse me. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes when you're clicking on existing geometry, sometimes you can accidentally click on something else. I'm going to come up and I'm going to put in 25, hit enter. Now you're going to note that I have a relationship in from the left end is 10 and from over here is 25. These yellow lines right here represent existing geometry. So the black lines you see are the geometry that we're placing on the sketch. So note what happens if I were to click on this line and drag up it's going to say this will over constrain the sketch because we already said that this was 60 earlier. You can't change the width of a solid by drawing a sketch on it. You would have to go back to your browser bar and change the dimensions of that extrusion. We're going to say cancel. We have one other dimension to place. The distance from the top down is 15. Dimension from here to your horizontal line here. Ah. Sometimes I click on the wrong stuff. Line up here, line down here, drag to the left, and we said that it was 15. Put in 15. Highlight this. I'll put in 15. Hit enter. And you now have your square right here. You're going to go to finish sketch and go to extrude. And you're going to note that when I click on this, it automatically goes to additive. Now, to put anything on there, it might say join is what this would be called. You're actually adding mass. We want to go to down here to cut, and cut is subtracting mass. Go to distance and go to all and say OK. And you're going to note now we have this cut that goes all the way through the object. Now, when I talked earlier about existing sketches, if I hit these little triangles next to extrusion 1 and extrusion 2 and just leave my mouse over the top of those sketches, you can see where I see 60 by 40. Down here, you can see the exact sketch I used to change these objects. Now, if I right click and go to visibility, I can come over here and change these 
as they are. So if, it, if this was actually 20, you're like, man, I made a mistake. I can just go to 20 and hit enter, and it's automatically going to change for you. It's nice. So we're going to hit undo. We're going to turn off the visibility of this sketch. And we're going to go ahead and put that rectangular prism down here that gets cut through on the side of our object. So let's go to our pencil, and let's click over here on the side of our object. And let's click on the word right, and it's going to zoom in for us. Now this rectangular prism is, has a relationship to existing geometry, just like we did with the other one. So from the left end is 3, and from the right end is 15. So let's go create that rectangular prism. We've gone to pencil, we've clicked here, we're going to go to our two-point rectangle. And I want you just to draw a rectangle in here. It does not matter the size, just draw a rectangle. That's all you have to do. And let's go ahead and relate it to existing geometry. So let's go from left to right. From the left end is 3, and then the distance of this line right here is going to be 15. So it's going to be 3, then 15. This line right here, this line right here, 3, enter. Now all I have to do here is just click on this line and drag up, 15. And now we have the perfect width dimensions for that. Now let's go ahead and let's do the height dimensions, 5 and 10. So let's go into here, dimension, line down here, line up to here. Sometimes it still messes with me. Dimension from this line to this line, drag over, 5. The height line right here is going to be 15. So let's click and drag over. We say 10. No, we said 10, excuse me. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to put in 10 and hit enter. And we now have our rectangular prism in its relationship to existing geometry. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut this all the way through. We can see this line right here, and there's no other dimensions to tell me that this doesn't go all the way through. So we're going to cut it all the way through. Go to Finish Sketch, go to Extrude, click inside the rectangle. And this added mass, we're going to go to Cut. And when it says Distance, we're going to go down to All. And you're going to say OK. And you'll notice what All does is on the other side, that comes out. I can see all the way through now. That's subtractive because you just subtracted mass from the object. So that's what's meant by additive and subtractive. The added modeling method would have been if we would have added mass to this. So that is how to do activity 4.2 number 2. So let's go up to save and let's call this activity 4.2 number, excuse me, number 2. I'm going to hit enter. And that's been how to create activity 4.2 number 2.